In the vast tapestry of human history, we encounter countless mythical narratives that speak to us of gods, angels, giants, and disasters. While these tales initially captivate us with their mystery, a deeper analysis reveals that they tell an alternative story of humanity, a story that most of us are not familiar with. In this intriguing setting, we highlight an ancient and apocalyptic religious work, the Book of Enoch. This book holds astonishing revelations about the origins of evil, the fallen angels, the Nephilim, the Flood, the Messiah, and the possible destinies of humanity. However, this book has been kept away from public view, its pages filled with secrets that were deliberately excluded from the Bible. The inevitable question that arises is why? Why was this book banned from sacred scriptures? What impactful mysteries does it hold? We invite you to delve with us into the pages of the Book of Enoch, a deep dive into the depths of history that reveals long-forgotten and astonishing secrets. The key to Enoch's exceptional journey lay in his unwavering faith. Regardless of the challenges he faced, he trusted in God and obeyed his will. This profound connection with the divine did not go unnoticed, and God loved Enoch in a special way, choosing to spare him from the experience of death. Jewish and Christian traditions honor the memory of Enoch as an author and prophet. He is often associated with the authorship of the Book of Enoch and is called the Scribe of Judgment in the New Testament, appearing in the Gospels of Luke, the Epistle to the Hebrews, and the Epistle of Jude. His significance transcended generations, and he is revered as a saint in both the Eastern and Western Orthodox churches as well as the Catholic Church. To discover more about the mythical figure of Enoch and the supernatural experiences that marked his journey, we must direct our attention to the apocryphal books attributed to him. But before we plunge into this intriguing universe, it's important to understand how these texts were rediscovered. At the end of 1946 and the beginning of 1947, Bedouin teenagers herding their goats and sheep near an ancient settlement on the northwest coast of the Dead Sea, in what is now known as the western part, made a surprising discovery. One of the young shepherds threw a stone into a side opening of a cliff and heard the sound of something breaking. Along with their companions, they explored the cave and found a treasure, large clay jars containing seven scrolls made of litter and papyrus. These treasures were acquired by an antiquities dealer and eventually fell into the hands of scholars who dated the texts to over 2,000 years old. News of the discovery spread, attracting treasure hunters and Bedouin archaeologists who unearthed tens of thousands of additional scroll fragments in ten nearby caves. Among them was the Book of Enoch, composed of five parts the Book of the Watchers, the Parables, the Astronomical Book, the Dreams and the Epistles of Enoch. However, this book is not without controversy. Excluded from Jewish and Christian scriptures, the Book of Enoch remained hidden for centuries until its rediscovery among the famous Dead Sea Scrolls. It gained prominence in the Ethiopian Orthodox Church. The Eritrean Orthodox Church also recognizes the importance of the Book of Enoch by including it in its canon of scriptures. In this context, Enoch is referred to as the seventh after Adam, highlighting his influence and significance in religious traditions. This recognition echoes in other parts of the world as Enoch is cited in the New Testament and the Dead Sea Scrolls, where fragments of this ancient text were found in languages such as Aramaic, Greek, and Latin. These fragments are clear evidence that the Book of Enoch was known and respected by some early Eastern Jews and Christians, and it played an influential role in their beliefs and religious practices. The Dead Sea Scrolls are an archaeological treasure that reveals the richness of ancient literature, and among them, we find not only the Book of Enoch, but also other related texts, such as the Book of Giants, the Book of Jubilees, and the Book of Heavenly Luminaries. 
These texts share similar themes and stories with the Book of Enoch, exploring topics like fallen angels, Nephilim, the apocalypse, and celestial secrets that captured the imagination and faith of generations. The Book of Enoch is a rich tapestry of teachings and extraordinary visions that lead us into a world full of wonders and mysteries. It unfolds in five distinct volumes, each revealing intriguing aspects of our relationship with the divine and the destiny of humanity. The first book, known as the Book of the Watchers, delves into the origins of the Nephilim, a race of giants that arose from the union of fallen angels with human women. This volume takes us through the divine judgment on these fallen angels and their offspring, a reminder of God's power and justice. In the three parables of the second book, we are led to the arrival of the Messiah, the Son of Man, who will bring judgment to the wicked and reward the righteous. Here, some of the earliest allusions to the resurrection of the dead and the judgment at the end of times are found. In the third volume, the Book of Heavenly Luminaries, we are invited to explore the mysteries of the heavens. This intriguing guide reveals how the movement of the sun, moon, stars, and other celestial bodies affects our world, shaping the day, night, seasons, and years. Learning to use the celestial calendar is a way to obey God's rules and determine the dates of festivals, sabbatical periods, and new moons. The fourth book, the Book of Dreams and Visions, transports us through time and space with extraordinary visions. In the first dream, we witness the creation of the world, the advent of the first human beings, Adam and Eve, and the rebellion of the angels. Enoch observes the profanation of the world, but also the deliverance of Adam and his family, and the flood that purges evil. In the second dream, Enoch unveils the destiny of Israel, from their exodus from Egypt to the conquest of Canaan, the rise and fall of kings, exile and restoration. He also offers glimpses of the Messiah and the final judgment of nations, culminating in a new heaven and a new earth, where the righteous will find eternal abode. These dreams are filled with symbols and mysteries, revealing God's secret plan for His creation. Finally, the fifth book, the Epistle of Enoch, is a wealth of knowledge and understanding that Enoch passed down to his children and followers. It includes letters in which the prophet advises, warns, and inspires his readers. In this volume, we find prophecies and visions, including those that speak of the rise of the Antichrist, tribulation, and the resurrection of the dead. Enoch also references his own works, such as the Book of Watchers and the Parables, and draws from external sources, like the Book of Noah and the Manuscript of the Giants. The journey in the Book of Enoch begins with a warning to all of humanity and the fallen angels who turn the earth into a stronghold of wickedness, bloodshed, and sorcery. It is a narrative that unveils divine secrets and invites us to reflect on our connection to the divine, our history, and our destiny. By exploring Enoch's words, we delve into an ocean of wisdom and faith that transcends the barriers of time and allows us to glimpse the divine. These texts, which now revealed forgotten mysteries, were carefully excluded from the Jewish and Christian biblical canons in the early centuries of the New Era. This secret now revealed sheds light on an intriguing aspect of history that the Church rarely addresses. According to ancient writings, Enoch played a monumental role as the guardian of all the treasures of heaven, leading the archangels and serving as a direct minister of God's throne. Among the truths that emerge is the story of the fallen angels, those who sinned on earth by joining with human women and sharing celestial secrets that humanity was not yet prepared to understand. The prohibition of this book may have been influenced by the fact that it contained prophecies about the E, which, at the time of its removal, may have been considered untimely. The story of the Watchers and the Nephilim is one of the most fascinating and mysterious narratives in the Book of Enoch. 
Who were these beings, and what did they do to deserve divine wrath and judgment? God assigned a group of angels, also known as the Sons of God, to watch over the planet and its inhabitants, serving as members of the Divine Council who worshipped the Most High God. However, some of these watchers succumbed to their passion for earthly women, the daughters of humanity. They made the decision to leave their celestial positions and descend to Earth, where they married women and produced offspring. These children, resulting from the relationship between angels and humans, were called Nephilim, which literally means the fallen. The term also suggests the possibility that they were beings with exceptional characteristics, perhaps born with deformities or under unusual circumstances. The Nephilim were not mere mortals. They were powerful beings of antiquity, heroes and warriors that populate legends and myths. However, they were also associated with violence, wickedness and hidden knowledge that cast shadows on the earth. Their oppression and shedding of blood caused suffering in every corner of the world. The Book of Enoch addresses the Watchers and the Nephilim as the origins of evil and the reason behind the flood, an event that remains etched in human memory as a great act of purification. Exploring these stories is embarking on a fascinating journey through the dawn of humanity, shedding light on the eternal conflict between the divine and the human, between heaven and earth. The Watchers not only sinned against God by forsaking their celestial abode and mingling with human women, but also passed on to their descendants and humanity a range of forbidden arts and sciences. Among these forbidden arts were warfare, astrology, magic, witchcraft, and divination. Their influence corrupted the natural order of creation, introducing sin and death into the world. God was not pleased with the actions of the Watchers and the Nephilim. He sent his most powerful archangels such as Michael, Gabriel, and Uriel to bind and imprison the Watchers in the Abyss, a dark and ominous place of torment, where they would remain until the Day of Judgment. Furthermore, God decreed that the Nephilim and their human allies would be destroyed by a great flood that would inundate the entire land. For this mission he chose Noah, a righteous and blameless man, to build an ark and save his family, along with pairs of all kinds of animals, from the impending cataclysm. The story of the Watchers and the Nephilim, as presented in the Book of Enoch, is both similar and different from the story presented in Genesis chapter 6. In Genesis, the sons of God and the daughters of men are briefly mentioned, Without much explanation or detail, the term Nephilim is also mentioned, but their origin and nature remain obscure. The main focus of Genesis chapter 6 is the widespread wickedness of humanity and God's sorrow over his creation. The flood is portrayed as a response to the corruption and violence that afflicted all flesh, not limited to the offspring of angels and women. Some scholars suggest that the Book of Enoch is an expansion and interpretation of the Genesis account, while others argue that both texts are based on a common ancient tradition dating back to a much earlier era. The story of the Watchers and the Nephilim is fascinating and complex, revealing secrets and mysteries about the ancient world and the divine plan. It also raises many challenging questions about our understanding of the nature and role of angels, the origin and extent of evil, and the relationship between them and humanity. Another equally fascinating and mysterious narrative in the Book of Enoch is the journey of Enoch himself. Chosen by God as a messenger and witness to the fallen angels, Enoch is depicted as a man of righteousness. He was taken up to heaven, where he received visions and secrets from the archangels. The book of Enoch reveals his role as a prophet and mediator between God and humanity, a role that sheds light on the divine and celestial events that shaped human history. Enoch, a righteous and blameless man, walked with God. 
He was the seventh generation after Adam and the father of Methuselah, the Bible's longevity record holder. Additionally, Enoch was the great-grandfather of Noah, the hero of the flood. Enoch's uniqueness was so apparent that he did not experience the process of death. Instead, God took him directly to heaven. Genesis chapter 5 verse 24 tells us that Enoch walked with God and he was not, for God took him. However, the book of Enoch delves into this intriguing narrative, revealing that Enoch was chosen by God as a messenger and witness to the fallen angels, known as the Watchers. These angels had sinned by engaging with human women and producing the Nephilim, mysterious and powerful beings. Enoch also bore witness to the faithful remnant of humanity, those who obeyed God and awaited his salvation. The account continues by describing Enoch's extraordinary journey in which he was taken to the heavens by two glorious angelic beings. Through ten heavens, each more majestic than the last, Enoch witnessed countless celestial wonders and secrets. In each heaven, he encountered different archangels who revealed to him the secrets of creation, the celestial realms, celestial bodies, the history of Israel, and the judgment of the wicked. Memorable visions stand out, such as one of God's throne, surrounded by fiery cherubim and seraphim, all proclaiming praises to God with thunderous voices. Enoch beheld the face of God shining like the sun, and heard his voice, which echoed like thunder. Another remarkable vision presented in the Book of Enoch is that of the Son of Man, the Messiah, seated beside God. His appearance was human, but his beauty surpassed that of any human being. Enoch was informed that the Son of Man would be the judge of the living and the dead and the heir of all things. The narrative also reveals the Tree of Life, which had its roots in the Garden of Eden and bore twelve types of fruits, each distinct from the others. Enoch observed that the tree was immensely tall and emitted a celestial fragrance that filled the air. He was informed that the Tree of Life was reserved for the righteous, granting them eternal life. The Book of Enoch describes the abyss as a dark and tormenting place where the fallen angels and the watchers were imprisoned and suffering. Enoch witnessed that the abyss was engulfed in fire and smoke and there was a kind of worship taking place there, although it was a place of punishment. The abyss was also inhabited by seven stars who were leaders of the watchers and had been named and cursed by God. Therefore, this place serves as a space of punishment and atonement for those who committed serious errors. Enoch also glimpsed the place of the dead, which was divided into four sections based on the actions of the deceased one. The first section was for the righteous, those who lived in peace and unity, awaiting resurrection and their rewards, too. The second section was for ordinary people awaiting forgiveness and divine mercy for their sins. 3. The third section was for the wicked, suffering in anguish and awaiting God's punishment and wrath. 4. The fourth section was for the apostates, living in darkness, horror, and despair, with no hope of salvation. Enoch also played a significant role as a prophet and mediator. He received revelations and prophecies from God and the archangels and recorded them in a book for future generations. Furthermore, Enoch acted as a mediator, interceding and praying on behalf of the fallen angels and sinful humans. He conveyed divine messages and warnings, thus fulfilling his role as an intermediary between God and humanity. The story of Enoch's journey, as narrated in the Book of Enoch, presents both similarities and notable differences from his brief mention in the Bible. In the Bible, Enoch is mentioned briefly in Genesis 5 and Hebrews 11. In Genesis 5, he is part of the genealogy from Adam to Noah and is notable for walking with God and being taken by God without experiencing death. In Hebrews 11, he is praised for his faith and listed as one of the heroes of faith who pleased God and were taken so as not to see death. 
An intriguing part of the Book of Enoch is the Apocalypse of Weeks, which divides human history into ten periods or weeks, each representing distinct stages of history and salvation. Each week is associated with significant figures such as Noah, Abraham, and Moses, and pivotal events. Enoch describes the Messiah and the end times as a series of cosmic transformations, angelic conflicts, and celestial interventions. The book's narrative differs from the biblical narrative found in Daniel and Revelation in various aspects. For example, the book of Enoch focuses on the Watchers and the Nephilim as the primary enemies of God and His people, whereas the Bible mentions four animals or the Antichrist. Furthermore, the book of Enoch does not mention the millennium or the resurrection of the dead, although it alludes to a final division between the righteous and the wicked. The timeline and symbols used in the book of Enoch differ from the biblical narrative, including the use of animals, weeks, and celestial bodies. It is a mysterious and controversial text that claims to reveal secrets about angels, giants, and the end of times. It is important to note that the book of Enoch is not part of the Bible and contradicts many aspects of it. However, some people still believe that it may contain some hidden truths and insights. There are several passages in the book of Enoch that contradict the Bible, such as chapter 10, verses 1-3, where Enoch mentions Noah, even though the Bible teaches that Enoch was taken to heaven before Noah's birth. How could Enoch know about Noah and the flood that inundated the earth? In chapter 10, verses 8 and 9, God assigns blame for the corruption of the earth to a demon named Hazael. This demon claims that the earth became corrupted due to the works he taught, taking full responsibility for the sins. Interestingly, the Bible does not mention many other demons apart from Lucifer, also known as Satan or the Devil. However, this does not imply that there are no other malevolent beings. Satan is often pointed to as the primary instigator of the world's evils, as he is considered the originator of sin. This belief is supported in 1 John chapter 3 verse 8, which states that sin is intrinsic to the devil, whose transgression occurred from the beginning of time. Jesus coming to earth was to destroy the works of the devil, offering hope of redemption for humanity. However, the book of Enoch, in chapter 13, verses 5 and 6, suggests that the fallen angels repented of their sins. This contrasts with the prevailing belief in the Bible, which indicates that the fate of Satan and his angels is eternal hellfire, as stated in Matthew 25, 41. This verse points to the eternal condemnation of Satan and his followers, revealing that they are unwilling to repent, as those who repent a promised deliverance from destruction in hell, as mentioned in 2 Peter 3.9. The Book of Enoch also casts a shadow on demons, stating that after their initial rebellion, they could no longer come into contact with God. They could not speak to Him or lift their eyes to heaven. This is intriguing since, in Job 1, Satan could present himself directly to God in heaven and discuss matters with him, such as his work and loyalty. However, the concept of heaven, according to the book of Enoch, differs significantly from what is found in the Bible. While Revelation 21.21 21 describes the floor of the celestial city as being made of pure gold and its streets as transparent glass, the book of Enoch, in chapter 14, verse 10, mentions that its base is made of crystal. This discrepancy is just one example of the many contradictions between the book of Enoch and the Bible. In chapter 14 of the book of Enoch, verses 9 to 25, present several other divergences, many of them challenging both the Bible and modern scientific knowledge. For instance, in chapter 33, verses 1-4, the book claims that Enoch mapped and counted all the stars in the sky. However, Jeremiah, in chapter 33, verse 22, states that the stars cannot be counted, which is a physical impossibility given their vast number. 
astronomers estimate that there are about a hundred billion stars just in the Milky Way, and there are numerous other galaxies in the universe. Furthermore, the Book of Enoch in chapter 41 mentions that the wind, snow, hail, and even the moon come out of a wooden receptacle in heaven, an idea that seems absurd in light of modern scientific knowledge. These discrepancies and contradictions between the Book of Enoch and the Bible arise questions about why the Book of Enoch is not included in the Bible. These differences, both in terms of descriptions of heaven and in astronomical and meteorological knowledge, may be one of the reasons it was not included in the canon of sacred scriptures. The Book of Enoch is undeniably a fascinating work, expanding the biblical narrative to encompass all eras, from Genesis to the advent of the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, and even the enigmatic Day of Judgment. It is a compilation that embraces the past, present, and future in a single volume. The question that many ask is why this book is not in the Bible. One crucial reason for this omission is that the first book of Enoch is not considered a scripture inspired by God. Furthermore, it is categorized as an example of pseudepigraphy, which means that the author is not who he claims to be. This is an important distinction, as the book of Enoch contradicts the Bible on several occasions, especially regarding Noah, suggesting that it was written by someone else at a later time. Due to its questionable authenticity, the book of Enoch is not widely valued by Christians seeking to understand the truths of the gospel. However, it is noteworthy that the book is referenced in a passage in Jude, possibly due to its familiarity and the inspiration it could provide to reinforce arguments in favor of the gospel. The mystery surrounding the book of Enoch persists as the only complete known copy is an Ethiopian translation of an original Greek, which in turn would have been translated from Hebrew and Aramaic sources in Palestine. The late nature of its composition and the lack of reliability of the original source contribute to doubts about the book's authenticity. The book of Enoch remains an unresolved enigma. There is no consensus on whether it was written by Enoch himself or compiled by someone inspired by him. The mystery surrounding this book, along with its contradictions with the Bible, is one of the reasons it is not part of the official canon of the Bible. The question of the veracity of the book of Enoch continues to intrigue scholars and believers, but its exclusion from the Bible is a decision that still sparks debates and discussions. I hope this video has blessed you in some way. Please share it with a friend. Thank you for watching and see you next time.